sweet. It's Let's a giant crucifix with a golden Jesus, and we call it Bomb Jesus because he's made out of an old bombshell, and that's just oh. in in the cemetery on campus. Oh, the dead monks are. Bomb Jesus. We had a cemetery too. Yeah, I can talk more about Bomb Jesus once I we mean, actually start. People die everywhere, Melissa. <laughs> no, like we had a cemetery <laughs> on our campus, and everybody else thought that was really weird because it was like right next to the stadium. It is in a major area. I walk past that cemetery every day to get to the cafeteria. I think it's weird to have a cemetery on a college campus. I had we one had on one my college next campus. to the campus, but it was not like the college school really yeah, like it was just like it just happened to be down the road. Yeah, this was the cemetery for the school's founders and their family. So I went to a very old school. There you go. Everybody's recording, right? Yep. Yes. Double checking. We are all. I'm mostly uh, checking for myself. <laughs> oh, I, I've <laughs> I've done that very recently. Like, thank God that I do multiple recordings all at once. Because uh, there's there's t- times where I'm just like, oh, I didn't hit record on that one thing. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> good good thing I still have the other one. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Let's go ahead and get things started. This is episode 42 of The Captain's Log. Uh, This week, there's three of us. My name's Kyle. That's Melissa. And over there, that's Jess. Hello. How is everyone doing? Hello. Good. I got my wine, so. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good night. Good stuff. And Melissa, you're drinking something as well. Oh, you make it sound so serious. I just have some Coke Zero to try and keep me awake, and I put a little vanilla whiskey in there for the flavor. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I I have a really boring Corona light, so you both are doing better than me. <laughs> so that's all I have. I have an ample wine. Ample. It might be a cider. Ooh, cider. There you go. That's real good. These are big dreams. Big dreams, dreaming big. I, I, I've um this week. I, I don't know about you, Melissa. You mentioned you were also really tired. I am too. I've not been sleeping well uh, the p- past couple <gasps> nights, and I think as as Jess y- y- yawns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I yeah, like I. Don't know. I I guess it's because I've had too much caffeine this week or something, mm. and it's just like mm. I'm staying awake till like <laughs> four in the morning, and I have to no! be up at, yeah at like nine something. Why? I, I, I don't. I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, when are you drinking your last thing of caffeine? Uh, it depends. Sometimes for something like this, I mean, it's it's a Friday night right now so i don't really care about that but uh usually not very long into the evening five at the latest six i don't know there's your problem no that's what i do too you can't have caffeine at six <laughs> cody and I go to tricked sleep. me last week he tricked you this month. yeah so <clears throat> We, Cody's my boyfriend, in case anybody doesn't know. Um, we have Dutch Bros up here in Washington, as you know, well as Starbucks and other things. But I prefer Dutch Bros because they make their own brand of energy drink and then they add flavoring to it. Um, mm-hmm. And so it makes it taste not gross. And I love it. And so there was a day, I think last week, where I was just so tired when I woke up. And Cody, maybe it was Monday, he's like, Well, you know, you could go to Dutch Bros. And I was like, well, I don't have time because I laid in bed too long for work. And he said, well, I'll bring you Dutch Bros when I get off work because he gets off about three hours before me. And I was like, okay, down. And so I go to work and we have security cameras and he hadn't texted me. They didn't been off work yet, but the security camera goes off and I check it and it's Cody walking in the front door. So I just casually text him. I'm like, hey, the mug that's sitting on the ottoman, if you take it, you'll save 25 cents at Dutch Bros because it's one of their reusable mugs. Hmm. And he's like, you still really want Dutch Bros? Because I'm, I'm really tired because he had a long day at work and he went in early. And I was like, I mean, I always really want Dutch Bros, but you <laughs> said you would. So if you're willing to still bring me Dutch Bros, then yes. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, fine. Just let me shower and stuff first because he works in a factory. So he gets really gross. 
And I was like, okay, that's fine as long as you bring me Dutch Bros. I don't care what the timeline is. And he's like, are you sure you want an energy drink this late in the afternoon? And it's like 4 o'clock at this point. And I was like, yeah, 4 o'clock is fine. That's not too late. And I don't have to go to bed as early as he does. So I can just like dink around on my phone or whatever. And he's like, what's in... They're called, so Dutch Bros Energy Drink is called a Rebel. So if you get a, it's a flavored Rebel. And he's like, what's in a Rebel? And I was like, literally, that's it. That's like what they call the energy drink. It's just that and flavoring. And he's like, really? And I was like, yeah, but I like mine with a little bit of lemonade. And he's like, are you, are you sure that you want caffeine? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, but if you want to get me a lemonade or a tea, I'd accept anything yummy, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, okay. And so he gets there and he gives me, he brings me a large, which is 32 ounces. It's usually two of their energy drinks. And I was like, I thought you were worried about me having caffeine. He's like, well, it's mostly lemonade. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Because I was like, why would you not just get me a small? That's a lot of sugar. Yeah. So I like drink it. I like get the after, you know, after caffeine jitters. I go hang out with my friend at like a happy hour. And then I get home and Cody's in bed. And I'm still thinking about it. I'm like, babe, babe, wake up. Babe, why didn't you get me a small? And he goes, it was all lemonade, like half asleep. And I was like, you what? <laughs> you <laughs> tricked me. Bad caffeine. So he just got me a large lemonade and I fell for it. That's great. Because he said it was mostly lemonade. And so I was like, that's why it tastes so lemonade And I thought I could taste the energy drink. And yeah, I was Placebo like, how effect. dare you betray me? Tactic. Well, and part of the reason I was upset that he betrayed me is Lent started on Wednesday. And I gave up energy drinks for Lent. And so oh, it was man. like one of the last, it was going to be one of the last energy drinks. Oh. So I was like, how dare you rob me of that? So mm-hmm. I, I remember when I start like first started or not, not when I first started necessarily, but when energy drinks first started getting big and it was like, mm-hmm. Ooh, this new thing, Red Bull, what's that? You know, uh, Ooh, monster. What is this thing? You know, um, my mom got me one from 7-Eleven because I asked for one while they went out and got something. I was still in high school. And uh, I drink it. I, I think it was a monster. I don't remember. Um, but then she she comes into the computer room where I, I, I am about like half an hour after having drank this energy drink. And we had like a laser mouse for our com- computer, so it was super accurate of like where you know where it was on on the screen. And she's mm-hmm. watching me do something, and she goes, "Why is the mouse moving that l- 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 like that?" <laughs> and I, like I, I don't even notice it, but then I start to like focus on it, and yet it's shaking, and it's because my my whole my whole arm is shaking. Like- <laughs> just, yeah, like I have too much caffeine in me i'm just like (laughs) i used to be really sensitive to caffeine i wouldn't drink it much and then i started an a nine to five office job where i sit at a desk every day and i have to do very detail oriented work so i have to keep my brain very very sharp and i can't like glass over at all or else i'm gonna do something wrong and then i started drinking coffee and I, I don't see how I can ever stop now. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've, I don't know, my body takes it pretty well now. Like, I don't have trouble going to sleep. I'm always scared that I will, but I never actually do. Like, I work, be me. Well, I work long hours. Like, I have long days. So I will get another coffee at, like, four or five to get me through the last bit of my evening. And then I will go to bed again at ten, like, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I I used to drink a lot more soda, and that like it was it was all caffeinated, and that was the thing. It's like I could have a soda at like two thirty in the morning and be asleep at like two forty five. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah. I give up energy drinks for Lent every year. Not that I do. I'm not Catholic, so I've only done Lent for the last couple of years. Um, upon going to a Catholic school and learning what Lent is, but I. There was said Dutch bros. There were two of them on the same road five minutes from my college. And they were open until 11. And Mm. I worked six to midnight. And I was very active. And so I drank a lot of energy drinks. And so I give them up every year for Lent just so that I 
don't, because I notice I'm having like one or two a week and I work a nine to six desk job that's, it's hard, but it's not like I don't need it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is dangerous. Because I will, like, if I don't eat food with it, I get all shaky and I feel like I'm going to pass out. But my problem is that coffee makes me sick. Like, I will throw oh. up if oh. I have even, like, a small amount of coffee. One, because, like, coffee coffee makes me sick. And two, I'm lactose intolerant. I don't mm, like coffee okay. that tastes like coffee. So I want it to taste like dairy and sugar. And then my body hates that, too. And so... It's really hard when I decide to give up energy drinks because I'm like, okay, I have soda now. You're going from energy drinks to soda. It's a big leap because yeah. I can't do coffee, which is like the in-between, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I don't drink a lot of energy drinks because I, I drink coffee because I know exactly what it is. Not that I'm like, mm, chemicals, bright colors, what's in that stuff? It's just like, oh, I, I, I coffee's a thing for me. Mom drank coffee in my whole life. I know exactly what coffee does. I do like the monster rehabs, though, that are mostly tea. That's that's what I go for when I need the very rare break from coffee. There you mm-hmm. go. <clears throat> Good stuff. So I saw Captain Marvel last uh, night. I know you guys I'm are about, about to go see it uh, shortly here. And I think uh, we're trying to do an episode of the Reactor yes. Core on it so we can do a spoiler cast it's back uh, so you guys can hear our full thoughts on that hopefully by tuesday which i guess this comes out on monday so hopefully the day after this Mm-hmm. look out for it yeah i'm um, so stoked to go see that Mm-hmm. yeah i it's, it, am... it was a lot of fun awesome my friend Don't... and i are going all out with the 90s theme like, we're both going to dress as 90s as possible. I have this necklace. I was wearing this <clears> when we were doing the um, X-Files podcast. It's like one of those stretchy chokers. That, yeah, yeah. It's one of those big stretchy chokers that has an alien charm on it. <laughs> I have other stuff, but that's that's the main that's piece. That's peak 90s. It yeah. is, it is. And I even tried to think, because we make a whole day out of going to the movies. I'm like, what's the most 90s restaurant like, well, clearly it's Taco Bell, but, you know, we want to go someplace nicer than Taco Bell. <laughs> Somewhere and you like, can actually eat it. Yeah, like, what, I love a Taco Sorry, Bell. Sorry, anybody who like... loves Taco Bell. <laughs> then, then, then you have to go to, like, Ruby Tuesdays or F- Fridays or Chili's. I've literally never seen a Ruby Tuesdays. What is Fridays? They're all the exact TGI same thing. TGI Fridays. Like, Applebee's, oh, TGI Fridays? Chili's. The only all place the I've seen a TGI Fridays is in the Dallas airport. But I love their oh. potato skins. I get them from the frozen aisle. Oh, those <laughs> are good. I figured out, I think, the most 90s restaurant outside of Taco Bell and, like, a Planet Hollywood or something real oh, crazy and yeah. like that. You're right. Which we don't have around here. They don't. They hardly exist anywhere anymore, so don't bother with it. I don't know. I think an Hard Outback rock. Steakhouse feels very Ooh. 90s to me. Yeah. Like, it's a little gimmicky. Mm-hmm. It's got that... I mean... The... The... The onion. The, the blue and onion. onion. Guys, I'm too tired. <laughs> I forgot the onion. You're just, like, pausing, and I was like, is she frozen? No, She's just I don't eating. remember the onion's name. <laughs> it's blooming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta do that. This I'm gonna go into work on Monday like I got so tired I forgot what a bloomin' onion was called, <laughs> and a bloomin' onion is sacred to me, so we have to change something. I feel like now that you're like listing all these restaurants, I feel like in the Pacific Northwest, and I don't know if it's because we're younger than everybody else statewide, but I feel like we don't have a lot of restaurants that everybody else has. Like the literally the first time I saw a TGI Fridays, I was in my twenties. And I'd been eating their potato skins growing up from the frozen aisle. And I was like, it's just like a, a food brand, right? And then I was like, holy shit, this is a restaurant. It's a restaurant I have never based seen... off the potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. So obviously I got the potato skins during our layover and it was amazing. Um, I've never seen a Chili's in my life except for in the office. Um, I've seen Apple. We have Applebee's. 
I think maybe I saw one Ruby Tuesday once, but it also may have been Tuesday morning, which I think is a different thing. Never I think that those. sells stuff, and I get those yeah. confused with Ruby Tuesday. I didn't know you had Tuesday morning out there because we have a couple of them and I've never been in one. It's sort of like a little antique small kind of place. I didn't know there was a chain. I thought St. Louis just had two or three of them. We, I've seen like two or three in all of Washington State and that's it. Weird. We have, I'm trying to think of more chain restaurants that we have or don't have, but I don't know. We have, do you guys have Blackbird Diner? No. They do. You- do see, that doesn't make sense to me. They do huge portions. Their taco bowl is like bigger than my head. And so I feel like that's a very Midwest thing to have like huge, huge yes. portions. So that doesn't make it sense. It happens. To me. Uh, I think we just have our huge portions elsewhere. Do you have a 54th Street Bar and Grill? Because that one's my favorite. I don't know what it is. It's, it's like your, it is your standard bar and grill, but just very extra like it's got a big menu with a lot of different things on it and it's one of those restaurants that's covered in stuff but it's like two applebee's put together it's a very weird dense restaurant but i like it very much so western washington is super hipster and we don't have a whole lot of chain bars i have noticed um we have some cheers and I went to one once. It was so, so sad. Oh. It was so sad. There was like nobody there. I don't think the tables were totally flat. The drinks were super small. Wait, like totally I, flat? Cody ordered as a drink. in like they were lopsided and would wobble yeah. or like? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cody ordered a drink while I was in the bathroom. And then I tried a sip. And the waitress was like over at my table to card me. And I was like whoa which like i'm used to getting carded but like not that aggressively and i was like damn like, why how dare you, you, you should have carded me when i came in the door you're a cheers but so that was like really sad but like all the places that i'm thinking about like bars that i go to they're all individual little things there's one that might be a chain it's called the office bar and grill and there is one in my hometown as well that i never went to so i don't know if they're the same but we have a bar in Tacoma. There's no bars in Federal Way, by the way. They're all sports bars. So you can just forget about that. Um, we have one called the Devil's Reef, which is a like tiki-themed rum bar. And it's super good. Most of their drinks use 151 proof, though. What are you doing shaking your head, Kyle? Just to, to be like, we don't have those. Nope. I, th- I thought you were oh, like... Yeah, no. And that I... one's definitely an indie little thing because they used to own, and I am... I will die mad about this. They used to, the people who own the Devil's Reef, uh, which is really, really great, and I love it. They used to own a place called Tacoma Cabana, which (gasps) had tiki's all over the place. You could get a drink on fire, which I did. It came in what looked like a dog bowl, because it was a drink for two people. So it came in a big bowl and two big straws, and they would put cinnamon on top of things and then light it on fire further. They'd, like, spark it. And you could get a drink and a pineapple. You could buy tiki cups. Cody has one because he collects tikis. And so we went there for one of his birthdays. They had little lanterns. They kept it really warm. They played vaguely tropical music, but nothing too, like, cheesy. Vaguely tropical music. (laughs) They no like, over the rainbow or something, you know? No, like, Mm -hmm. Christmas in Hawaii songs or whatever. Um, They closed it. And I didn't know. (gasps) I didn't find out until afterwards. And the owners opened... A fern bar. Does anybody know what a fern bar is? Is it just filled with ferns? It is a 70s themed bar filled with ferns and macrame and <gasps> covers that are fake ah! white fur. And Melissa like, the sounds like she would love I this have, place. I have to go to this place. I have I'm to go to all of them. It, so to be honest, like this one doesn't suck. It's just like it replaced a tropical bar in rainy Washington. So it's like, what did you do? It though, like, it's so it looked weird. like my grandparents' house. And then we walked in <laughs> and it smelled like my grandparents' house. And I was like, how did you do this? How did you do this? Down to like the wooden chairs with the ornate decorate, like carvings on the back yes. on the top of it that yes. everybody's grandparents had. Yeah. But like all of their signature drinks have cream in them. And I'm lactose intolerant and I can power through it. I have dairy pills, but I'm like, if I'm getting drunk, I don't, I don't want to worry about taking a lactose pill, but they have one called Blue Milk. 
which is fun. Oh, no. So like, it's not a Star bad Wars. bar, but I'm just really mad that it's not the Tiki bar. <laughs> I had, when I was like 12 years old, I got this interior design book because that was something I was interested in at the time. I still am. I'm still quietly, secretly a nerd for that. And it was called Pad, The Guide to Ultra Living. And it's all these weird, like super detailed, super themed, super concepty, like vintage themed houses. And there's so much like throwback, like 1960s, 1970s stuff. And there was like an entire tiki bar inside a guy's house. Oh my god, that's the dream right there, though. Oh, I loved that's- it. And this book went on. It had like, here's all these profiles and these beautiful homes. And here's how you can implement these design strategies in your own house. And these are things you can build. And then at the end, there was a chapter on like, okay, you've designed a great place. This is how you throw a great housewarming party. And it had a ton of cocktail recipes, a ton of big, fancy, light them on fire, like covered in fruit and sugar on the rim, tropical drink recipes that I would read all the time as a 12-year-old. And I've not made any of them yet as an adult, but that aesthetic, I adore. Do you know what I love about this story? What? Is that the last time I was on the captain's log, you talked about this book and how you knew what kind of housewarming party you wanted to throw? I did. (laughs) And so this just proves it. Shout out to two weeks ago. (laughs) You should definitely have like a tiki party. I get to go to Hawaii for the first time this summer and I am stoked out of my mind to sit around yes. and drink fruity drinks just all damn day on the beach. Oh, We're also going to do some really cool stuff because I've never been there so I want to do literally everything there is to do. Mm-hmm. But Cody's backup plan in life is to be a beach bum. Good. Solid. At least to- so stoked. Sounds like Although like fun. I don't like coconut or pineapple so that's going to be real fun. <laughs> yeah, those are the two major tropical things. Yeah, pineapple flavor is okay. Uh, I can do it sometimes in small amounts. Coconut, though, I just really hate. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not a fifth fan of coconut stuff either. I'm also just kind of picky. Um, so I'm really lucky. We're going to go to Costco um, to get supplies. And so I'll probably just snack on a lot of food. The reason we're going to Costco to get supplies is that we're going with Cody's family. Mm-hmm. And when you hear... We're going to Hawaii with my boyfriend's family. You think like his parents and his brothers and his sister-in-law, right? No, it is Cody's grandparents, their three children, all of their kids and partners. There's going to be like 26 people going. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's insane. Are and like stuff? the thing is, this is not all of them. Only a small handful are going to be over 21 and actually like our age, not Cody's aunts. Not yeah. that they're not fun. They are, but like, you know, and the rest of them are going to be like kids still in school, mm-hmm. not in college school, in like high school or younger. <laughs> they're fun. It's just going to be, it's going to be a lot of people. And that is a lot so, of people. Yeah. Luckily, we don't have like an itinerary. So it's not like, okay, this day we're doing this with 26 people and this day we're doing yeah. this. You know, it's That's they've all a been a couple of times. So plan we do stuff for do. that many. This people. sounds this sounds like the episode of Full House where everybody in the Full House went to Hawaii. <laughs> that might be kind of what it's like. Well, and Cody's like, I don't know if we should rent a car or not, because I will not be 25 by the time that we go, but he will mm. be. But apparently there I've learned there are some rental car companies that will rent to you if you're under 25 just for a fee. Yeah. Um huh. interesting. But so we've thought about it, but we're not sure. But I was like, honestly, I think we should, because I don't know how we're going to get back. I don't know how we're going to get from the airport to where we're staying. Because parents are like, we're going to rent a minivan, but they drive an excursion on the daily for all of their kids. Because they have four kids, all but one of whom has a partner. Mm. So, and we're all going. So, I don't, I don't know. Like, Drew's girlfriend is going, I'm going, Jesse's wife is going. So, it's going to be a lot of people. I'm super stoked. I've never been on a vacation with more than four people before. Just me, mom, and dad, and my brother. My I family went used to, to go Disneyland. to places yeah. all the time. Yeah, you used to live like that home alone life. 
kind of not being not being home alone, but going on like a big God, international family vacation. By two strangers, <laughs> and a, you know, <laughs> not what actually happens in Home Alone, but what was supposed to happen in Home Alone. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. we, I have a big family on my mom's side. She has a bunch of cis siblings, uh, and so we would all go. To, like there was a good like stint of like four or five years that every year for Christmas uh, we would go to some different location and stuff like that. One year was Hawaii, one year was Mexico, one year was Australia. You know, uh, so the other side of the world, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. It was one good. time I went to Denver, and that's the farthest <laughs> way I've been. Cody. He's so funny. Our families are very different. I, we have both have the same amount of siblings. We both have three, but I'm the oldest, and Cody is smack in the middle of four because the two youngest are twins. Mm. Okay. Um, and like his family has gone to Hawaii so many times that they have a favorite island, and they think oh. some islands are only mediocre. And I'm just like, <gasps> there's no such thing as a mediocre island. <laughs> well, I don't know if they think that, Unless but like it's I overheard Cody's mom being like, mediocre I like. <laughs> sunsets on this island better than I like the sunsets on this island and I'm just like I can't comprehend that but that's just how many times we've been they have preferences you know which is not yeah. bad whereas my family our thing is we've been to Disneyland three times um there which you, you know twice when I was in middle school and once when I was in college so there was a big old gap and I was telling Cody I was like yeah it's like not a bad thing but it's just really weird to me when your family talks about Hawaii the way they do because I just I don't get it and he's like well you've been to Disneyland a bunch of times and I'm like yeah and I would take you with me if I could like we're gonna go to Disneyland together sometime and I love every single thing about it oh. but it was so funny that he was like well you've been to Disneyland I'm like I love Disneyland Hawaii is more expensive and Hawaii is probably better honestly Disneyland is really great but like once you're older like there's just for me I love Disney characters but like there's no appeal in any of that stuff Mm. like I just want to ride all the rides and drink all the fun drinks you know and the funnel cakes (laughs) (laughs) the 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 churros the cupcakes the popcorn I'm a Mm -hmm. big Disney parks nerd that's one of my major nerddoms right now I spent a lot of time on Disney parks YouTube videos. I, I saw you tweet something because th- there's some podcast you listen to that I know does like theme park stuff, and I think podcast, it's specifically podcast. The ride is what it's there, called, there and it's go. my favorite right now. You tweeted something. You were like, "I want them to do a special episode on this thing, that thing, was... <laughs> whatever this thing is." Uh, this week I watched Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Oh, no. <laughs> which is a 1978 what? TV special produced by not Hanna Barbera, but mm. only one of the guys, like only Hanna or Barbera, produced this. And it's produced like by hour, Hannah. <laughs> it's like hour, hour and a half long TV special. And it's filmed entirely in Magic Mountain, which is a, a Six Flags theme park in like mm-hmm. Southern California that's huge. <clears throat> it's like one of the it's probably the biggest Six Flags and it's one of the biggest just American theme parks. It's filmed entirely in there. And the story is that Kiss is going to play like a three day series of concerts at this theme park. Kiss also has superpowers, which they control through talismans. And there's a mad scientist who is a laboratory (laughs) deep underneath the park And he's like a mad animatronics maker. Like he makes super realistic animatronics. So he makes animatronics that look like Kiss. And Kiss have to fight the robot versions of themselves. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. It's, Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's, oh, it's bananas. (laughs) So fun. And so I tweeted like, you guys should do a special bonus episode only on Kiss Meets the Phantom. On like only the park parts of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Nothing about actually Kiss. That's funny. I feel like there's so many different weird versions of different Kiss stories. Like, don't didn't they have a comic at one point or a movie? Oh, they've had like, comics sure, and they've met Scooby Doo and they've what met is Archie going on with Kiss? and they've done they've done ev- everything. I don't know. This is like m- the most ex- exposure to Kiss I have ever had. Which, while we're on the subject of Disney, can we talk about all the weird Disney rumors? Like, I've heard that there's a basketball court in the Matterhorn. Okay. Okie dokie. I have no idea if that's true or not. 
I know well, they have like tunnels. Belinda, that makes sense. we need you. <laughs> Belinda does need to come on here and we can just have an entire Disney conversation. Okay. Disney World has the tunnels. These are called the Utilidors or Utility Corridors. And Disney World the Utilidors. Is... <laughs> Disney World when you walk out you're actually on the second floor cuz they built all of that from scratch, it was just like huge patches of like fields and swampland down there. And the trouble with Disneyland is that it's got all those different sections, right? Like Fantasyland, Adventureland, Tomorrowland. Mm-hmm. And to get around, cast members, which is what they call their employees, everybody's called a cast member, even if you're not like uh, in a performing sort of role. Like, somebody who would be dressed in, like, the Adventureland, like, kind of Wild West Frontier sort of outfit would need to, like, walk through Tomorrowland to get somewhere. And Walt Disney's like, this really nope. ruins the, yeah, this kind of ruins the atmosphere and the immersiveness I was Secret trying to set up. So, yeah, so when we build Disney World, we're filling it with so many tunnels underneath the ground. And so you just get everywhere through tunnels, like, that's where all the trash gets carted around. Everything they don't want you to see goes in the tunnels. And that's mm-hmm. also where there's, like, break rooms and, you know, the hair and makeup and the wardrobe for all the characters in costume and all of that. So, yes, uh, the secret tu- – they're not secret tunnels. Everybody knows they're there. You just can't – You just can't go in them. As a civilian, really get in I them. used to work somewhere with tunnels. <gasps> where was this place? Um, It was at the Science Center that is in Seattle. Ah. Um in Washington, which I was actually, and I'm really, really hoping nobody ever hears this, and I don't think there's anything that can be done. I'm not going to tell who let me in, but I went Damn. in those tunnels yesterday. I have <gasps> not worked there since August. <laughs> one of my previous boss. There she is. Um, Arrest her. She's the <laughs> one. <laughs> um, my previous boss just left yesterday. She's going to go, I think, study French in France for like six weeks, months. I almost said years. Months. I almost said weeks. She's going to go study. And so she left and she had a happy hour. And I went and apparently surprised her. My friend who still works there, who shall go unnamed because they let us in, um, said, hey, just so that everybody who used to work with her knows, because I think I mentioned like I got laid off in August and it was brutal, um, knows like she's leaving and having a happy hour and I love her like she's not the person who did it she like fought to keep us but they ended up like axing the whole department it was this whole big thing um but they didn't say that they said it was budget cuts that's what they told me um suck yeah it was really really hard because all of my friends were there and my whole life revolved around doing that because that's what I loved that's what I wanted my career to be and so Going to the happy hour yesterday was actually really amazing because I never had my own happy hour. I kept being like, oh, I should have one. But like Seattle's so far away and I'm trying to find a job. So I don't have any money. And then it was too late. And I was like, people probably don't even miss me. And I went yesterday and my old boss looked like she was going to cry. She hugged me so hard and like did not let go. She was also five or six marks in. Um, And there were all of my old friends and they were like, oh my God, how are you? Like, we're so sorry. We never got to say goodbye. We're so sorry. We're busy. And I just felt so validated. I was like, oh my God, these people still know my name. They still care about me. And of course, if any of them ever hear this, they're going to be like, of course we care about you. And I know, but also like when you get laid off and you lose a job and you get in a dark place, you don't think that. Um, So it's really validating. But my old boss, she was like, well, there's this cardboard box. There's a box that I want from an office that I worked in. And my coworker who works there was like, we can go get the box. Or not my my old coworker. And my boss was like, it's an empty box. I just need it for shipping things. And I was like, okay, well, let's go get or the box. And we were parked in that. things. We, <laughs> we were parked in that parking lot. My boss's sister is there, like, kind of helping her. And so we go, we get the box, we play around in the dinosaur area a little bit, take a picture. Yeah. Like, there's, like, old 80s animatronic dinosaurs there. Yeah. And, um... Too. The best kind. Yeah. And then <laughs> we're leaving through what's called the loading dock. And my old boss sees the door to where, like, all the, like, maintenance type people work, mm-hmm. which is in the beginning of the tunnels. You have to go down some very steep stairs that are almost like a ladder. And she just goes. And we're all like, no, 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 no. Like, don't. Nope. Come back. And she, like, gets towards the stairs. And we're, like, grabbing. We're like, no, no, no. And Cody's like, she's probably the most dangerous thing in here or whatever. Like, he sees a tool or something. And I was like. <laughs> 
go look at those stairs because you've never seen it because you don't work here. And he looks and he's like, whoa. Um, so, yeah, that's the story of how I <laughs> went with my old drunk boss. <laughs> oh. She's not old. She's my old boss and she was drunk. Um, I feel like I'm obligated to say in case anybody ever hears this, I don't share views with the Science Center and I don't work there anymore and I didn't say who let me in and I'm never going to say. Um, <laughs> and also, we were Covering escorted by somebody. Ass. We had... I remember the handbook. We were allowed to have guests after hours as long as we escorted them everywhere. So, like, nobody did anything wrong. We just had to go pick up somebody's personal belongings from an office. And my boss definitely didn't try and jump in the water. That's there. <laughs> I, Great. My position was called an operations lead. And I responded to things like medical emergencies and lost children and stuff. Hmm. And when my boss went towards the water... I have never had my heels off so fast or been under a stanchion so fast. Like, it all just kicked back, and I was like, foomph. I, like, <laughs> left my heels. I'm like, no. My other, the person that I used to work with is over there. They're grabbing her. They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I don't think she was actually going to do it, but it was one of those things where you're like, oh, we don't actually know how many margaritas in she is. We couldn't remember how many. <laughs> That's funny. So I, I text morning. Oh, head. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I knew she was hangover, so I didn't even say, oh, how are you doing? I was like, Sp cut your Gatorade with water. It makes it yep. less sugary. By the way, for those of us who are old, cut your Gatorade with water. Mm -hmm. Really helps. So I have two interesting stories to oh. share. Uh, a c couple weeks ago, I shared a story on here. I think both of you were on that on that episode where i mentioned that i lost an amazon gift card that oh, my parents this, yes. a lot of money too. bought me they found it <gasps> finally and oh, i was just yeah. like yeah what the hell this is amazing um i i I don't know how they found it or or what they did but yeah my mom uh was t texting me about something else I, I think she had a doctor's ap ap appointment recently and then was just like, oh, by the way, we found that gift card. Just like nonchalantly, like, oh, we found it like a week ago, you know, maybe we'll tell you. And I was just like, you found it? Oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> um, and yeah, so she, she, was, she was like, uh, so what do we need to do to get this to you? I was like, all I need is the code on the back of the thing and my mom <sighs> doesn't really understand technology mm -hmm. um there was oh, no. there was one time where she refused to give me the, we, we we all share like a family netflix account mm -hmm. uh and a couple years ago when i bought my playstation 4 i was setting up like netflix and all of that stuff and for a while there, she refused to give me the Netflix password because she thought somehow porn was going to end up on her computer if she gave me the password. <laughs> what? So, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, Mom, that's not how it works. Mm. Porn um, doesn't just get on your computer. You have yeah. to go looking for it. You have yeah, to go find she, that. She doesn't understand that. Um, <sighs> but, but she... With this gift card, I was like, all I need is the code so I can p put that into a a Amazon on my end. You don't need to mail it to me. All I need is a picture of the back of the Send card. It. Yeah. And she was like, uh, okay, I, I mean, I, I guess I can do that, but are, th are they going to charge me again? Because <laughs> I, 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 I was like, uh, no why you would they try you already bought it like you were texting would... a code to someone like at what point does money or any overseeing factor yeah just didn't understand this. that if she oh. bought a gift card already and then i activate it on my account that it wouldn't charge her again which may like if that was the case why would she get a such an expensive gift card like you, you know like that that doesn't make sense um but but yeah, she eventually sent it to me, so I I I uh, I was like everything in my wish list select <laughs> oh, nice. send to cart. <laughs> um, so I'm actually I'm g g g heading a little bit of like sound those like uh, egg crate foam sound. Oh nice, proofing things for this room. Uh, we'll see how they work. 
they're like the Amazon basic ones or whoa, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, just gonna kind of experiment with those because I have no idea exactly how to sound proof stuff. Um, but one of the, the the big thing that I I got uh, is a is a stream deck, uh, an Elgato oh, yeah. stream deck. And I, I I don't really stream video ga- ga- games yet. I want to. I'm not much of a PC gamer, and I don't have my PlayStation 4 here in the same room. Um, but it's it's basically like a thing that has a bunch of buttons that I can uh, program to automatically do things, whether it's switch switch scenes here on our podcast you know if melissa's like oh we need to go watch this one youtube video i can be like hit the (gasps) internet button and it pulls up youtube and yeah and then we can do that stuff or have the social media stuff pop up um so yeah that was neat i should be getting that tomorrow so i'm hopefully going to be setting that up so that next week we will have it yes. set. And Melissa, if I have everything set up, maybe we'll have it good to go for tomorrow for the review show. Or not tomorrow, but uh, Sunday. Yes. Sunday. Tomorrow's Saturday, right? Please. please. Yes, tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, so I'm I'm super excited about that. Awesome. Um, yeah, that was just one of the like serendipity <laughs> random things. Like, oh, That's by the way, good. here's two hundred dollars <laughs> that we, that you thought you lost. <laughs> oh yes, That's amazing. Yeah, uh, and then so I mentioned that I went to go see Captain Marvel mm-hmm. last night, and uh, I I have a bus pass that I can use to get around on the public transport here since i work for vcu i can ride for free um and i decided i didn't really want to risk it with the bus because i didn't know which bus i was gonna need to take i didn't know Mm -hmm. how often they come stuff like that uh so i was just like i'm just gonna get an uber and not worry about it so my roommate was like, oh, you should absolutely take an Uber because they're doing some kind of like reduced rate thing right now. So you mm. can get something for like six bucks. I was like, oh, perfect. Um, and so I took one there, saw the movie. Again, I mentioned it was fantastic. And our full thoughts will be on uh, the episode of the Reactor Core that uh, we should be recording sometime this weekend. We don't know exactly yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, I got one on for my ride home as well, and it was this woman. Uh, she she was a little bit older. Uh, I I don't know how old. I'm assuming she smoked or used to like the the stereotypical like older yes. woman who lives in Florida and is really tan and smokes a lot, and she's yes. not actually as old as you think she is type of thing mm-hmm. that's the kind of vibe that i got from her um but she was very talkative and i'm i'm a very quiet person when i'm not on the podcast but i'm also i'm i'm like i'm way too nice not to like mm-hmm. at least say something back un- unless i actually do have my head phones <laughs> in then I'm, I'm just like What'd you say? What was that? Who? You know? <laughs> Sorry, what? Um, yeah, so like the, the passive ag- aggressive, like, hey, I have my headphones in, you know, don't mm-hmm. bother me. But she was talking and she, it's one of those things, like, I'm a guy, I don't really have to deal with like creeper pe- people being like, so where are you g- 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 Oh, and your outfit looks it's nice, blah, 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 you know, all of the, the, the hat <laughs> stuff, or just, just, you know, that type of creepy conversation but she had the like morbid conversation that was just like i like i don't think this would be comfortable for anyone (laughs) apparently she saw a car accident uh earlier in the day and it was a really bad one uh no one died it did it didn't sound like anyone was hurt but like the whole point of her conversation was like, man, you can be here one second and then the next second you're gone. Like, you don't That's know. 
anything. I'm like, look, I am in your car. I am entrusting you to get me and my life safely back to my house. <laughs> Don't That's what fuck the this up. Reaper says before he rapes you. Yeah, exactly. Before he's just like, this you. is this is not not good. Like I'm just like, yeah, scary stuff. Life is strange. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and 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 like I, it's. It, it was just like I. That's that's not the kind of conversation that I want to be hearing while I'm in the back seat of of your car here. Uh, but then she she's also talking about like uh, she's working till like five a.m. So she's gonna be doing this thing, um, and she's already stacking up like who's next. She's like I I, I already have the next pr- person good to go. I was like, well, good for you. Like you know you're stacking up that money getting that getting that getting that dough you know and she's like hell yeah hell yeah and uh she drops me off and as i'm getting out she's like yeah oh oh, looks like i'm right around the corner that's strange good uh and then as i go in the like back gate to my house my roommate is coming out and so i like i i don't know if he's going out with some friends or something i was like oh is this your ride and it sounded like he he said no it sounded like his driver was someone else but as i like said bye and kept on walking uh it like it it he got in (laughs) the car so i okay you always check the car and the person (laughs) yeah which which they did so apparently he must have heard me or something or or not not heard me right but yeah it was was weird that like i had her as my uber driver and then she goes to drop me off at my house where my roommate is getting in the same (laughs) the same uber i've never seen that happen Uh uh-huh did he get the same conversation though oh i have no idea i've not seen him since he's been working all the day so so he died. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. Who knows? <laughs> I haven't seen him since. Yeah. <laughs> Probably for his report. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I um, just interaction yes. I've ever had with a stranger was like a couple months after I moved into my first apartment. It's like later at night. It's like 9 30, 10 o'clock. And I hear a knock on my door and I open the door. And it's this woman who says she lives across the hall from me. And I'm like, yeah, I think I've seen you once or twice before. And she says, my boyfriend just dropped me off back at home. I think I dropped my cell phone in his car, but I don't know. All I know is I don't have it here in front of me. I need some help. Can I borrow your phone for a second and call him? Because I don't have a like house phone. I always call hate him. when people ask to use my phone. <laughs> This is like the one time it's happened. So she's like, can I use your phone and call him? And then also, could you like walk outside with me? So I just have another pair of eyes to help me check just in case. Like I didn't drop it in his car. I like dropped it in the parking lot. It's like, okay. okay. And she also has this like very thick accent. Uh, She was from Asia somewhere. I didn't get to know her very well. I don't know her past. I'm only like, 90% 90% sure what her name was. She told me her name was Kim, but one time I saw her picking up some mail and there was n- that could not possibly- There was no Kim who lived there. It could not possibly be shortened <laughs> to Kim, so who knows if that was true. <laughs> so I, I am mostly getting what she's saying. She's also, like, talking pretty fast and she's kind of worried. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, like, I'll help you. Sure, like, it isn't, you know- it, that's not too much to ask. Everything she's saying really makes sense. But I'm also like, this is the first time I'm living on my own. And she's like asking me, like, hey, can I go inside? And like I'm so he said, Yeah, you can use my phone. She's like, okay. And she kind of like nudges her way into like my apartment and we're just standing in my like front hallway while she's calling me <laughs> her boyfriend on my phone. Cause I think she's like, Well, I'm not inviting this lady into my apartment. And also I don't want to stand in the hallway. So I'll stand in her I'm apartment. Invite myself. <laughs> Like, is this, like, a ploy? Is this how a robbery goes? Like, I don't know. This is my first time really being an adult. As she's, like, waiting for her boyfriend to pick up. And she's like, this looks nice here. How long have you been here? She's casing the joint. Like, asking me all these questions. 
but then like so she calls her boyfriend and he's gonna you know come back around and you know make sure uh her phone isn't in his car but while that's happening we're like well let's go out and like check the parking lot just in case and she goes back into her apartment and she comes out with a candle she doesn't have a flashlight or anything. She is a, a candle, and it's one of those long white taper candles on um, like a little saucer with like the finger hold. She brings out an Ebenezer Scrooge candle to go like poke around the parking lot. And she drops the phone there. What the hell? Like, well, okay, this absolute like I was just slightly uncertain before, but now I'm absolutely like certain. <laughs> this cannot be a ploy. Like you would not put. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge candle. This has to be real. That's not a part of anybody's criminal plan. <laughs> and That's one time, ridiculous. like the next year, she knocked. Uh, I think it was in his car. Yeah, because we didn't <laughs> find it outside. Then, and I think she asked me to do it one more time. Like, hey, I think I left my phone in my boyfriend's car can you can i use your phone and call him and one time she knocks on the door and she says hey i will give you five bucks if you drive me to the dollar store and to the grocery store so i can get like my last christmas groceries and my cigarettes and my beer that's so (laughs) weird Okay, yeah, Christmas time is the time of giving. Yeah, Carol's been <laughs> an hour driving you around for weird little errands for you to give me $5. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> when we lived in an apartment, probably the weirdest interaction was also the nicest. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to drive a 1998 Blazer. It, when it finally died, had 249,000 miles on it. I was ah. definitely not the first owner. Uh, but I owned it because my first car was having some electrical problems. It was a Pontiac, and I loved it. And I was moving back and forth between my parents' house and my dorm every year. And I lived maybe 15 minutes from where I grew up. Or no, I lived... My home was like 15 minutes from my college. And so it wasn't like a huge move, but it was nice to not have to take a bunch of trips. Yeah. Um, and I also had a bean bag that I actually don't have now. It's at my grandma's because it would take up like the entire middle of this room. It's huge. Um, you can use it as its own bed. It's called a love yeah. sack. Uh, everybody should Google it. Uh, L-O-V-E-S-A-C. Um, they make huge bean bags. But I had one at one point, and so that fit in the back of it, which is nice. But um, it died one time, like, in the parking lot. And I was like, well, shit. The car or the beanbag? I out what to do. The car, sorry, my, my blazer. And I had figured out. I'm sitting out... there like, what if the beanbag just exploded? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was borrowing a car from my parents. It was a stick shift, and I hated it. I know how to drive stick shift, but I don't always like doing it. Um, and it was really temperamental. It was a Saturn, but not, like, but before they had different kinds of Saturns. It's just a Saturn. Um, and so my blazer is dead in the parking lot. It's not a big deal. And then they're like, we're restriping the parking lot. You have to move your car or we'll tow it. And I was like, my car doesn't start right now. And so Cody and I are like, well, we will push it across the street. There's a Whole Foods parking garage underneath the Whole Foods. We can park it there for the like day that they're restriping or whatever. And then you can move it back. We're like, okay, the blazer's not light. I'm, like, steering. Cody is pushing, or maybe I was pushing and Cody was steering. I don't know. Either way, somebody's there. Somebody's pushing it. And these two really nice Mormon girls come out. Uh-huh. There was an apartment that I think that a, a Mormon church must have just rented because it was mm-hmm. – they never lived there for very long. But it was always, like, different pairs of girls or different pairs of guys. And they come out, and they're in, like, their long skirts and their flats after church. I just dropped some Legos and broke them. <sighs> Hold on. I can't sit still. It's a – it's a TIE fighter. Um, <clears throat> like that scene in Spider-Man. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay, sorry. So they're in like their long skirts. They've just come from church and they're like, do you need help? And I was like, I look at Cody and I'm like, actually, yeah, we're just trying to get it across the street. It won't start. If you want to like change and come back, we'll still be in the parking lot probably. And they're like, oh, okay. And they just like open the back door and put their purses like in my in my back seat and just start pushing like in their skirts Aww. and their flats. And we get it all the way across the street. And I was like, oh my God, you guys are so nice. Aww. And of course, you know, they're like, here's the little thing. I'm like, where are we going to church? And I was like, 
I, I humored card. him a little bit more than I usually do. Um, <clears throat> and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, thanks so much. But it was just so, because I was like, yeah, if you need to like go put on, I don't know, pants or yeah. real shoes. And they just like got to work. And I was like, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. But yeah, the engine exploded on that in the middle Oof. of the night when I was on my way home from my job at the comic shop that ended at midnight. So Ugh. that was fun. Yep. All there the lights, go. I heard a loud noise and all the lights went out and I just pulled over as fast as I could. Yikes. <laughs> Loved that car though. It's a good Aww. car. R.I.P. I drive an Outback now though, so that's pretty good. Oh, nice. I like it a lot. Does your c- car come with a blooming uh, onion? <laughs> <laughs> No, but it came with a scuba diving sticker. Ooh, that's Mm -hmm. nice. That's exotic. Yeah, it came from my, so it came from my grandpa. It was his car. He was the only owner. And then he, his mom moved into um, like one of those care facilities and didn't drive anymore. So he got her newer car, which is like a Toyota or something. And he loved it. So he gave it to his daughter, my aunt. And she was like, I like this, but I don't need it. So I'm going to drive it for a little bit, you know, just so we don't hurt his feelings. And then I'm going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that sounds great to me. Just, you know, hold on to it for however long you want. If you decide you want to keep it, like I like my blazer, it explodes. Mm-hmm. I call my aunt the next morning. She lives in Linwood, which is above Seattle. Mm-hmm. And I live in Tacoma. So she's about an hour away at least. And I call her and I'm like, hey, so you know how you, this is really weird to do. Hey, I'm like, hey, you know how. <laughs> You so were on top of your headphones. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, you're maybe gonna get rid of that. You know, Grandpa's out back. Can I have it? Because I think my car is dead, dead. And it turns <sighs> out it was. And so she was a saint, drove it down like same day. And so my grandpa scuba dives or used to scuba dive. So that's why it has that sticker. And then I put my, you know, student parking sticker on it. And I just kind of decided that it it needs stickers because it's an outback in the Pacific Northwest. So I only put them on my window, but I, you know, I still have my parking sticker. I still have the scuba sticker, even though it's all cracked. I have a membership sticker from the science center that I used to work at. I have a Jake the Alligator Man sticker, which is from Long Beach, Washington. We have... It's so fun. Jake the Alligator Man. You yeah, just have to what the hell is Jake the Alligator Man? Yeah, so he is a, he's one of those like cryptid hoax things where yeah. they're like, we found an alligator man. He's half alligator, half uh, man, and he's only like this big. And it's definitely two taxidermy things put together. But everybody's yes. like, it's Jake the Alligator Man. He existed. Yes. Um, and so I have a, a Jake the Alligator Man sticker. Long Beach also has, I think, the world's largest frying pan. <gasps> which, How big? I don't know. I'll look it up. Um, at one point, why are you so excited about that? I love touristy, schlocky stuff like that, because the Midwest is full of it. You're a Saint- sucker for it. <laughs> I am. St. Louis has um a one very, very big ketchup bottle. It might be the biggest in the world. Who knows? And one very big Vest soda bottle. And I don't imagine Vest soda has traveled outside of the Midwest. I've never even heard of it. It's just a generic brand of soda that you find it everywhere around here, I guess. <laughs> like, every grocery store has it. Like, every gas station <clears throat> has it. And it's, <clears throat> like, cheap, and it comes in a lot of flavors and a lot of, like, offbeat kind of fruity flavors. Like, this is the strawberry soda, the pineapple soda. It's kind of like... Like, it does all the flavors, but it also does everything like a Fanta or something does. Sure. And it's super cheap, and it is at every party. I think every party I've ever been to has some Vest soda there. Hmm. I want to try some. You should ship some to me. Um, so... Long Beach no longer has the world's largest frying pan. This uh, little article from Roadside America says, um, so it's 14 feet long with the handle, 9 feet and 6 inches wide, and I quote, despite its name and impressive size, it is not the world's largest, having been surpassed in subsequent years by other towns with more ambitious plans and pans. (laughs) But when they made it, they celebrated. Plans are a big thing. And Ambition. Like, ooh, I want to beat that town. Let's make I a bigger have frying the pan. Largest frying <laughs> pan, yeah. But when they first made it, clams and you know seafood is a big thing on the coast here. Mm-hmm. So they had girls on like ice skates with huge ass butter pats attached to them. Yeah, skate around it, and they made clams in it or something like that. Um, but yeah, 
Long Beach also has the world's largest spitting clam. It's a wooden structure. They have the world's largest chopsticks, and they do have the world's longest drivable beach. It's a mile long, and you can drive on it legally. It is, a, I think, a state highway. It's ah. got a speed limit. I think it's 25 miles an hour, but that's why it's called Long Beach. It's really fun. It's really hokey. I love going there. There's not a whole lot more to do than see the beach and Jake the Alligator Man, but uh, the that's place that has Jake the Alligator me. Man... It's Marsh's Free Museum. They have a, n- a bunch of other weird taxidermy stuff. And they also have, like, all the little shells and stuff. And I think they maybe have a mummy. And yes! all those, like, games. Amazing. There's, like, Test Your Love Meter and Taffy and all of that stuff, which I, I love it. I need it. Fun. Oh, okay. I'm going to blow your guys' minds for just a second here. What? Speak- speaking of big things, I watched this Where's video this on... <laughs> Somewhere educational. <laughs> so I watched a video on YouTube that was famous statues size comparison. And okay. it's these like digital like 3D mock-ups of like the David and you know the sure. statue of Abraham Lincoln and like all these different things 3D rendered in a space together and the camera pans around and you see how big each of them is in comparison to each other. It was pretty cool. And it gets to like massive statues that must be new because i've never heard of these it gets to like statue of liberty and i'm like oh I'm, is You've that the biggest the one? statue of liberty <laughs> no well that one i know but i'm like that's probably the biggest one there is i don't know if there's a bigger statue and it keeps going and going and the tallest yeah. statue in the world and i had never heard of this because it just finished being built in like november it's called the Statue of Unity. You two Google this thing right now. This is in India it. somewhere. And it is a giant man the size of two Statues of Liberty. He's two of that lady. He's two of her. And he's he's insane. He's insane. It looks like a giant kaiju who rose up from the sea. That's he looks huge. Like, he looks like, like a special tell. effect. How, how does that one compare to Colossus of Rhodes? Oh, way taller than Colossus. Probably taller. Oh, man. Get out of there. It looks like there are mountains in the background. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's bananas. And it's... What is it like to just live by this guy? Just every day you leave your house and you see just, like, from the waist up, probably, even if you live miles away, this giant stone man, and he's incredibly detailed and lifelike. Oh, but is he somebody in particular? Because when you said Statue of Unity, I assumed it would be like two people. No, he's a like an Indian statesman. He's one with himself. He's unified yeah. with himself. <laughs> also, there's like people standing by his toes, and each toe is almost as tall as an entire person. Yeah, it's bananas. Like, what? A, your life is different after the statue is built. You think about yourself in a different way. Like, you're existentially irrevocably changed like i think about that giant iron in flcl yeah now everybody just lives by the iron now they're like well who knows what the iron does it's just casting in shadow over all of us and this is like (laughs) that you live by giant man so i looked up how tall the colossus of Rhodes is 100 or was 108 feet statue of liberty is 300 and something statue of unity is 597 so it's yeah. almost six times as tall as the colossus of Rhodes. damn yeah which was like the dopest thing in history i'm very upset it's not there anymore yeah yeah We're big fine. big statues like that are, are just freaking cool mm-hmm. like when you're just like whoa what a good thing for humans to spend their time on just big old statues I mentioned this to you two, but not when we were recording. It's a cool statue, but it's not a big statue. Oh. I went to a Catholic college, and there is a cemetery there where the dead monks go. Um, and, and there is a big old crucifix in the back with a golden life-size Jesus. And we call him Bomb Jesus because he's made out of a bomb shell mm-hmm. and it's super cool and i have pictures there and i'm just like chilling with bomb jesus but it's great because we would talk about it all the time just so that we could say bomb jesus <laughs> like oh yeah have you seen bomb jesus lately he's looking real good or like oh yeah i went up to bomb jesus on a walk the other day it was nice and peaceful That's you funny. know oh yeah i took my senior photos with bomb jesus like eric took my senior photos um 
when I graduated uh-huh. and I specifically was like, I, I want to get some with mom Jesus. Like I also have one Amazing. with a few with Jesus who's out front of the school and is missing his pinky. They've oh. tried to replace it. It just always falls off. Oh, <laughs> that's spooky. weird. Speaking of like school statues and stuff like this, I, I only remember this because I was talking about it with another f- f- friend of mine, like, couple weeks ago and so it just, it just on my on my mind um actually actually before i mention that speaking of jesus i don't know if you guys can see it but like right let's see if i can point to it on camera i, I don't know if you can see it but i have the the like burger king pokeball that's yeah like right back there i have an action figure of jesus in in oh, in, in that it was just rad. some little stupid action figure that i saw at a store and i was like it has real gliding action and i love it <laughs> my grandma for christmas one year got us this pocket jesus <gasps> oh so little <laughs> this tiny little plastic jesus anyways we have a lot um, of jesus oh. around our house <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I was going to say that this 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 school statue thing. That I, I, I was going to say uh, when I was in high school, my senior year, uh, one of the things that like the senior class uh, each year would get a gift to the school. I think like the year before us got us like a, a new like scoreboard for our football stadium thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we wanted to get like a statue of our mascot or I guess not we, but that's what it was decided that like our class g- gift would be. And I think we, uh, we, we commissioned a local, I, 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 I keep saying we, like we had some choice or option in this thing. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like I, we, we commissioned some local artist and we were like hey can you build the statue of a hornet because uh, that was our high school mascot mm, okay so they did and it was not i mean it was not life size because life size there'd be what like that big <laughs> um, but like <laughs> it it was like humanoid so size much. okay um maybe just a little bit shorter than like average high school kid mm-hmm. right but this thing did not last two weeks before the school took it down. Not because oh. it was destroyed, not because it was vandalized, but because it was a hornet standing on its hind two legs in like a fighting like Goku Dragon Ball Z stance. And yes, Melissa, you already know what's what's about to happen. Its stinger was just like pointing right up. Oh, I love it. And it just oh. it it looked like a giant dick, and it was just, just no and, and like it's not even something that like all the students would snicker about. The teachers were also like, "Oh my god, what do we do? <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> we cannot um, have this thing." <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So I can do better than bomb Jesus. And more on that note, when I was in high school, I went to school. We were the Cougars. Uh, it's where my siblings our all rivals, go now. Or one of our ri- <laughs> r- 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 rival schools were the Cougars. Mm, ours were the Bears. Eric went there and he sucks. Uh, and so do the Bears. Uh, anyways, we were the Cougars. And there was a cu- Cougar statue in the library. And it was like brass colored. And it's still there. It straight up has balls. Oh my God. <laughs> In a high school library. It's just there and they're dangling and they're brass. And so like when my sister got to high school, like immediately I was like, hey, go around to the back of the cougar statue. And she's like, oh my God. And I was like, I know. And they haven't got like I think that was there when my dad went there. Like it's That's still so funny. There somehow. It just has a huge literal brass balls. That's oh, funny. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was speechless. Epic. Melissa is speechless. <laughs> no, I'm trying to find a picture of this hornet statue to see if I, anybody I, has ever documented it online. I don't. I don't know if if there oh, was. Dang it. I but, found uh, a high school hornet statue, but it's in Ohio. It's yeah. not the same one. Anyways, we should start wrapping things up here. It is getting late. Uh, at least for, for me. 
but we we've all had <laughs> long exhausting weeks. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm so old. So thank you all for for joining us uh, in the live stream. New episodes of this podcast of the Captain's Log come out every Monday. Uh, if you enjoy the show, uh, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us and you can get episodes early. Uh, that is pretty nifty if you guys want to do that. And of course, live streams every for Friday night. I think we've kind of settled at this t- time Friday nights at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then if you guys are not in Eastern time, you can figure out it out from there. I'm terrible at math. 7 p.m. Pacific. I don't know anything else, though. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, little, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we, Melissa and I, I just recorded the first Patreon-exclusive episode of the review show where we covered, uh, where we covered some episodes of The X-Files. Uh, so you guys should absolutely go check that out. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, that being said, we also want to give a big shout out to patrons, uh, that are at the $5 level. So thank you to Christine, to Sam, and to Eric as well. You guys are fantastic. You guys keep the lights on and the mics on and all of that stuff and help us pay for all of our hosting and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much this has been episode 42 of the captain's log melissa you are cracking up <laughs> I, is that the weird things i'm doing she's no, she's, I, she's looking up weird pornographic no. oh, statues no, of not, something not i'm sure porn. i just googled the phrase worst statue oh no <laughs> oh no it's a gold mind i recommend all of you do it <laughs> your homework for this episode you of can episode. find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W I L K Y W I T. And maybe I'll post some pics of my rad 90s look for when I go see Captain Marvel tomorrow. There you go. And Jess, where can they find you on the interwebs? Uh, on Instagram, I am Accio Jess Beaver. It's Accio like in Harry Potter and Beaver as in B E V E R. There's no A there. Uh, and on Twitter, I am Legend underscore of underscore jess i'm sorry that they're all so complicated but when your first name is jess you don't have a whole lot of options (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so yeah it's mostly pictures of my cat there you go um and how I was, just, I was gonna wrap it up there, but I, I didn't mention all of my stuff. I'm at Yo Kyle Springer <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram, uh, so you guys can find me and yell at me there if you guys would like. Uh, and thank you, Sam, for reminding me of this. But yes, we are one dollar short of reaching our first Patreon goal. Um, and and uh, if if you guys re- like our show or the review show or what all all the p- podcasts that we do, uh, just one that one more dollar would help us out a ton, and that would uh, help us reach our Patreon goal, uh, which is just pocket change for you guys. But the three dollar level gets all of the uh, exclusive content. Five dollar level gets a shout out on the show and a yearly thank you. Pay- pack stuff like that it's cool uh but that being said a yearly thank you pack yeah we do <laughs> well we, we do a yearly thank you pack for p- people who've been at the five dollar level for an entire year and can i every quit and then that. do that no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah with that we will see you guys next week uh hope you guys have a good week love you bye, bye.